Free-to-play games are a staple of the game industry these days. Some are good and some are bad, some are fair and some are downright despicable in their monetization. Me personally, I've played quite a few free MMORPGs as they've largely gone free-to-play as interest in them wanes. And I find that there's a fair amount of substance to be drawn from them even though they are free. And that extends to other free games as well. Being born in the beginning of the 80s, I'm a child of the Thatcher and Reagan era and so a child of capitalist bullshit and wasteful consumerism. I hate that shit, but that's how it is. Even though I hate it, I do quite like a bit of retail therapy, especially when it comes to video games, I like to try new games as they come out. But in this day and age, money is too tight to mention, so I have decided to play the, all the free games on offer and to see how much value can be milked from them and what, if any, is the cat. So with that said, I jumped onto Steam to see what was available and I filtered on MMORPG, as is my want, as I thought also I might get more game for my non-existent buck. I set the price filter to zero and hit enter. First up on the list is Dragonair Silent Gods. Now bear in mind that this game is showing up in the MMORPG filter, and I can clearly see that this is some kind of auto battler type game, so perhaps they are stretching the definition of MMORPG, but the visual presentation actually looks quite good, and the movie looks exciting, and I can see that they are playing heavy on the tabletop roleplay vibe, and also have a tie-in coming with Dungeons and Dragons, so they're putting a good foot forward. So I download the game, and I boot it up, and off it goes. I feel like I'm a bit of a passenger during the tutorial as it just indicates that I press this or that and immediately it's quite obvious that this game is designed for mobile. In fact, if I'd have paid attention to where it says it's available on the Google Play Store, that would have been a bit of a giveaway. I'm fine with that, but I do take a mental note and lower my MMORPG expectations a little bit. You get shown some of the basics of gameplay and it all just kind of happens at you and upon experiencing combat it is confirmed that this pretty much is an auto battler. With a little bit of skill selection for some player agency. I'm not completely against this as I do quite like teamfight tactics and that is the gold standard auto battler I will judge all other auto battlers against. There is some guff about a dragon being entombed for 1200 years and while I am still entertaining the thought of reading all the text box the fantasy story is already showing signs of being incredibly generic. I'm not the best person to judge how gripping a story is because I do get quite bored quite quickly. But with that said, if I ever do say a story is good, then by Jove it must be fucking good and well delivered in order to grab my pea-brained attention. The character creation is pretty uninspired with four characters to choose from, human, elf, Dwarf, lizard person, the lizard man, looks like a big old dork, someone tell David Icke. Cosmetic choices are limited, but I can have a back accessory which apparently does fuck all, so I choose a big horn. I wake up in the underworld and it's sort of isometric shit like Civilization, where your player is more like a tabletop miniature in terms of their size in relation to the terrain. You click to move, but we're still very much on rails at this point, and it will be a while till we have the freedom to roam. I then have a choice of following an evil looking necromancer dude, or a strange soul, which is a ghostly woman. I'm not sure what the consequences are, or if this is a meaningful choice, but I follow the strange soul. Immediately after following her, the necro bastard appears again, and kills the strange soul. So glad I chose her. Then I am killed, so glad I chose me. Then I am alive again, I think. I was sacrificed but I have awoken again, and I am apparently the special one. I am a special one. Perhaps this is an MMORPG after all. I already don't care about the lore, so I just choose whatever dialogue options I think will get things going quicker. The game starts giving me things that look like they may be different in-game currencies, and I just keep clicking to accept things and go where I'm told. It is at this point that some of the initial graphical sheen starts to wear off, and I notice that characters' mouths don't move when they talk, although most dialogue is just accompanied by a, a still portrait. 
The game introduces dice rolls to bolster the D&D vibes for the odd perception check or bonus. But I'm pretty sure these dice are loaded at this point, but it is still a tutorial, so fine. I speak to some more people and just continue doing as I'm told. At this point, nearly an hour in, I'm hopeful that combat may actually be enjoyable and this is the one part of the game that I'm looking forward to. I just wish perhaps there had been more of it at this point. Once again, I am told I am the special one. Yay for me. I am a special one. The game keeps giving me more stuff and we do indeed start doing combat more. And at the beginning of each new combat, I click on green crosses above my team's heads to heal them. And I make a mental note that whilst I'm not sure what it is at this point, I'm probably using a resource that I will need later down the line. I decide to just click liberally and not worry about it and see how it pans out. But I feel the looming presence of a stamina mechanic and subsequent monetization to solve it. As we go on, I'm starting to get a feel for the different character roles and how you might start building up a team. There's different sort of like attack types and defensive characters and poison characters and different elements. And then equipment is added into the mix and you can refine each piece of equipment using one of the in-game currencies. In fact, I seem to be getting so much gold coins that I have thousands already. And so I just decide to spend as much as I can on refining and not worry about whether I run out or not. As it happens, the gold coins are pretty much pissing out of your dick. There's so many of them given to you and you're showered with them from everywhere. So you'll never want for coins. And I feel like this is on purpose to make you feel like you're very much enriched. Crystals, on the other hand, I see a skill upgrade button. So I click on it and there it is. The first thing that has been shown to me that has an actual monetary value attached to it. Nothing too crazy at first, something like a fiver, just to sort of get this sort of skill upgrade, currency, reagent, material, whatever you want to call it. So I decide to poke around a bit. It seems that dragon crystals are going to be your main currency. And I start to see the use of the word daily popping up for rewards and stuff like that. And it's all starting to click into place. A couple of more clicks and we get a better picture of what's on offer in the cash shop where it seemingly maxes out with an offer of 7,000 crystals for a mere £99. What a bargain. From here it is just the introduction of one system after another, a legendary summon dice are given to me and so the gacha part of the game is revealed as you can roll these for a chance to unlock random warriors for your squad. We get a few more different currencies thrown at us that will be used for upgrading and the like. And this is a quite depressing part of the game and I just click on what I'm told and it all kind of whizzes by. Then I'm incentivized to link my social media accounts for extra rewards and I mentally tell the game to go fuck itself as I push on just wanting to get more combat. If the combat is fun, then I can overlook everything else, at least for a time. The voice acting is there, but it is starting to grate a bit, and I can't help but feel like my troll doesn't sound very troll. Whatever that should sound like. Amazing. Absolutely incredible. Whilst I did choose a horn at the beginning that does nothing, I now get given a big horn that goes in my camp. And I use the big horn and I summon a, another troll. And he's lawful evil or something, and I wonder whether alignment system will play a part, but if I have been told this, then I've skipped right past it, as it was buried in amongst the uninspired story. Then there's a multi-stage boss fight which looks quite impressive for a bit but doesn't really live up to my expectations. But we progress the storyline and a dark lady basically lays out what we will be doing in the game. Travelling around the overworld looking for fragments of the child of chaos. Once again, I am told I am the special one. I am a special one. And this time because I fused with the shard. Hip hip hooray. I get to set some stats which is... Unexpected as I thought I'd already created my character but I start to wonder whether this will affect much but I just throw the points down and save and move on and honestly 
I have no idea whether they made a difference or not. Then I find the battle pass and I claim some stuff. So check that one off the monetization checklist. I see a button that I can press to get more rewards or something like that. And I am given the choice to buy more rewards. How rewarding. If you click on an item it does give you a description but I'll be honest it means nothing to me. I'm sure everything will become clear in time. Once we get to the overworld I check out the map and it is pretty big but I, I wonder how much freedom we will actually have. Then something exciting happens, I get a Brussels sprout. Truly this is a blessed day. I defeat some furries, I mean furies, and once again I am told that I am the special one. And from here I start trying to just click on anything that isn't the thing that the game wants me to click on. I feel like I want to go my own way and I feel like I'm still quite on rails. I'm still not convinced that the game isn't just fudging dice rolls for me and it makes me wonder again how much agency I really have. And I'm really starting to get bored of the lack of combat and now I'm just clicking furiously through everything in order to progress to see what comes next. There is been combat, it's few and far between with story in between it and it's not really what I'm wanting from an auto battler. I get my first warning that my food is low. That's the stuff I use to heal myself. A nice unexpected twist is that there is a tower defense combat mode. Like some zones or some battles that you encounter have a tower defense kind of format. So that's a nice surprise. I like a bit of tower defense. It's very rudimentary and simple, but it's there. I noticed that there are other players in the game. There seems to be people trying to sell stuff, messages in Chinese, and then people just sort of sending what feel like disconnected messages. There doesn't seem to be any kind of conversation going backwards and forwards, and I wonder whether it's just that whether they're all just bots, to be honest. By this point, I think I'd played at least five or six hours, and I stopped for the night and read some reviews, and many of my suspicions were confirmed. Many negative reviews just tell it as it is. I don't consider them to be overly unfair or aggressive. They are just telling it like it is. This is a mobile gacha game. And even a lot of the positive reviews on Steam are still pointing out the same fact, but just seem to have like a higher tolerance for it. I notice a lot of people pointing out that there is some kind of scam running for good reviews, but who am I to say if this is true? But it certainly isn't working if it is. In general, you should think of these games much like you would a fruit machine. They're designed to try and get you addicted and milk your money. You roll for random items and there's your sort of element of excitement, so to speak. Well, or more precisely, they are designed to milk the money from a very small amount of the player base. The whales who either have more money than sense or addictive personalities or compulsion disorders or whatever. Either way, it is predatory and it is never very nice in my view. One brave defender in his review says that this is a mobile game where paying to get an advantage is fine and says as well they should as they keep the game going. I find this a fucking hilarious take and a bit misguided to make out that this little mom and pop developers need the money money to keep carrying on. I did have a quick look around for who the publisher is and stuff and I think they also publish Marvel Snap so I'm sure they're real hard up. It doesn't really feel like my first game vibes and with a 99 quid cash shop pack you ain't doing a support us model by contributing a bit here and there. So I think it's fair to say that this is like any other gacha fucking loot box mobile game. The next night I come back and I play a bit more but my interest is flagging. Everything looks nice and everything and it isn't a bad game as such but I feel my interest waning. I do find the goblin there and this seems to be the first time that combat feels interesting. And I get invested in trying to beat the level under the time limit and that reignites my interest again for another hour or two where I kind of grind more to try and beat it but I can't help feel that there will be a lot of overall grinding. I think I also like this part is because you could kind of just comp play combat over and over again. I try again, I try again. 
and that meant that I could do lots of combat because at this point the story part of this has just fallen to pieces for me. I keep levelling up my characters and I keep rerunning the goblin lair, trying to hit that new time limit, but it's always just out of touch. I try and complete as many quests and explore the map as much as I, as I can uh, in order to try and get stuff to craft armour and weapons to equip to my characters and after a while I do manage to beat it once I've equipped every character I have with a full set of refined armour and I am able to progress to level 3 and it took me quite a while to, to do this. I then play level 3 and get utterly wrecked immediately and on the strength of what I had to do to beat level 2 I'm going to need a lot more grinding so that's confirmed for me and also by this point my pile of resources has dwindled in the process. Every time you want to run the goblin there you have to have bread to do it and if you want to get more bread you buy it with crystals and you just know how this goes you buy one thing with one thing and one thing with another thing and another thing with another thing until eventually the thing you buy with money is the thing that starts that trail off. So I use red crystals because you are getting given stuff as you go along but that's going to dry up at some point or you're going to outpace it. But I do use the red crystals to buy more bread in order to run the goblin lair dungeon thing over and over and all the currencies are going down. While I haven't reached the limit yet and felt the pinch I know it is coming and it feels off-putting. I'm going to hit that hard limit where you don't have any bread to continue doing the bit that you find fun. So with that, I do a bit more exploring and I do a few more quests and I push into a new area and I find more quests and another dungeon type thing but I can already see where this is going because I get wrecked in that as well. The hero part, the thing where you roll to get random heroes that you get from earning these dice they aren't really that inspiring and while I can see that matching energy types or attack types with your heroes and equipping them and upgrading your camp allows you to find combinations I don't ever feel rewarded or inspired to push on. When I play TFT it almost feels like I'm playing poker. There is an element of chance combined with memorization of the different items and combinations and the fast paced ability to jump back into another fight make it actually enjoyable because that's what I actually want to do I don't give a fuck about what type of bullshit story you're trying to tell me I want to play the auto battle I want to battle whereas here whatever enjoyment I get is essentially broken up by generic story and cheesy dialogue just waffling along as I furiously click to skip it all I had never played it but some reviews liken it to the dreaded raid shadow legends and so I give that a quick download just to see the comparison. First off, I ran it through an emulator on my PC and it immediately crashed my whole PC when I launched it. So fuck that. And I downloaded it on my phone to give it a go there. It is empty and soulless. But what I will say is that within seconds of opening it, I am fighting. And within the first 20 minutes, I have rolled for heroes, played tens and dozens of fights and be whizzed through everything there is at breakneck speed and I'm sure there is more because I gave up after about half an hour, 40 minutes. On the downside, by 20 minutes in, I had already clicked the like auto battle. And I know it's an auto battle, but what I mean is I just clicked the button that makes the game play its fucking self. So on the flip side, <laughs> that, that isn't how this is supposed to work either. But at least it doesn't fuck about. It gets you in and gets you doing what I perceive that I would want to do. And I haven't played it since I downloaded it. However, that fucking bastard app does not stop sending me fucking alerts about how it wants me to go back in, the needy little cunt. But at least I can say I've played it now, and now I can delete it and never ever play it again. It is at this point that I decide to give up, as I think that although you could just keep going, and I could go for a bit more, it's not, like I said, it's not the worst. I kind of hoped it would be a lot shittier, because then it would just make decisions for me. But I'm not getting what I want from it, and none of it interests me anymore. There's better fantasy story games, so I close the app and click to uninstall. 
I stopped playing just shy of eight hours and the game was still giving me currency drops etc but I have the feeling that around the 10 hour mark I would probably feel it slow down and the grind would set in probably because they would hope that you'll be hooked by then. Ultimately I think the game is quite shallow and uninteresting and there would be better more rewarding free games out there. It certainly isn't an MMORPG that's for sure. I just wish they would have leaned into one side or the other. Make a squad building quick fire auto battler as the combat system wasn't too bad. If you just skip the story and let me play that over and over, I could like probably get into that maybe, you know, especially as the publisher have published other games like Marvel Snap, which is incredibly well designed in terms of getting you to just one more go, just quickly you get you into it, get you going, or just make a story driven fantasy RPG you can play on your mobile. The graphics are nice. The, you know, the animations are pretty decent, apart from where they forgot to animate characters' mouths. But, for me, this misses on both fronts. And, with the added part that it would like you to pay a shitload of money at the same time. Not recommended.